Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm Josh Gessman, along with Wendy Thomas. And on today's show, we're covering a bunch of things that have been burning up your time on social media. Or maybe that's just my time. Giovanni Dos Santos was left off the Copa America roster for Mexico. We'll talk about the good and the bad with regards to the LA Galaxy. And we're also going to be talking about the newly released salary figures that just came out from the MLS Players Union. Finally, we're looking ahead to the game on Sunday at Cali Classico. It's the LA Galaxy versus San Jose Earthquakes in round number two at StubHub Center. It's a packed show, and we've got a live audience, so don't go anywhere. You're listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Now here are your hosts, Josh Gessman and Wendy Thomas. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman. Wendy Thomas with me again. Glad to be back with you once again for another exciting show. Lots of stuff to talk about. Lots of fun things to do. We also have a live studio audience in the house. Yes, very nice. We got Greg and Sev sitting in on uh, on this wonderful show here, so hopefully maybe we'll get some of their input a little bit later in the show as well. So a lot of fun stuff, but before we do anything, obviously we have to first get our wonderful, excellent, stupendous lawyer co-host who has been released from arbit- released from arbitration, <laughs> Wendy Thomas. Wendy, how's it going? Oh, it's going so well now that I get to talk to you, Josh. I feel like it has been eons since I've had a chance to sit in on the COG podcast. Yeah, it has been a little bit of a, a, a little while for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I've missed it so much. I'm so jealous of Jared and Corey when they get to be in here. and I don't. Well, the good news was that the LA Galaxy didn't have a game. And because they didn't have a game, that means that, uh, you know, you didn't miss all that much because we actually even took like a Monday off. I mean, it was... You know, there was there was some there was some lag time in there. It wasn't horrible. But there was the Philly clash. Yes. And, uh, you know, and there's been many, many rumors and I haven't had a chance to opine on any of them. Oh, OK. So oh, I'll get your take then. Tell me a little bit about Philadelphia and what you thought real quick. 30 second synopsis. Go. 30 seconds. I think that when you have to play a game three days after playing at home and you have to travel 3000 miles to Philly and you also are playing with a roster with so many adjustments that it's decent to get a point and I'm okay with that. All right. I can yeah. I, I can deal with that. Okay. Now, so so rumors Zlatan Ibrahimovic coming to the I imagine that I imagine that was the rumor you were talking about. Well, there's a lot of uh, buzz floating around the Twitter sphere, but yes, I, the, obviously the the rumor relating to Zlatan Ibrahimovic potentially coming to MLS and LA Galaxy being his primary target is is raised a lot of eyebrows, wouldn't you say? Uh, yes, yes, I think I think MLS his eyebrows have raised you know all around whether it's philadelphia getting mad that they think they're not going to get their fifty thousand dollars which by the way can we talk <laughs> discovery is this another discovery rights ripoff yeah it's like it's like oh hey we're philadelphia and we discovered zlatan and then really they yeah. can't they can't even discover him because he's zlatan and he's like undiscoverable right so it's like <laughs> it's like hey philly offer him 10 to 12 million dollars a year and then he'll come to you but you're not going to so shut it be quiet have you ever read zlatan's autobiography uh no it's a really, and I read so many of these uh, football books, and most of the autobiographies are just as, you know, it's like watching paint dry. They're so bad. Right. But Zlatan's, I would say, was an exception. It is a truly entertaining book. And I know that he had, it was ghost written quite heavily, but his persona comes through, and you learn a lot about Zlatan from his book, including the fact that he, a lot of his, 
um, major idols in life uh, are American. In fact, the one the sports figure that he uh, most idolizes, other than Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo, um, it was Muhammad Ali. And I think that Zlatan's persona, in a, in a way, mm -hmm. is really reminiscent of Muhammad Ali when you think about it. Uh, so it's kind of fitting that he wants to come to the United States because a lot of his the influences in his book were American. I think right. that he, um, I think in some way he has a lot of affection for American culture and and pop values and stuff like that. Well, that's interesting. It, you know, the, you can say almost a similar thread to Nigel DeYoung, who's so interested in American culture, American football. Um, you know, sort of led him to the LA Galaxy. Perhaps uh, Zlatan can be led to Los Angeles, uh, where all things sparkle. And I think if if Zlatan goes anywhere, he has to be at a sparkly place. Quite honestly. Well, I think that I mean, yes, he definitely needs to be in a city that is big enough to accommodate his personality. And I think that that limits it to, you know, some of the most cosmopolitan cities in the United States. So, you know, you could say LA and New York, right. but even maybe a city like Washington DC or San Francisco or Chicago or something like that, maybe. But I think LA and New York are the two cities that um, would be able to accommodate Zlatan and his probably many appetites and wishes and hopes and desires and everything like that. That's you need. And I don't even know I, it frightens me to think of who could coach Zlatan. I think Bruce is the only one. I really don't. I can't think of a coach in MLS who could handle do you think, the, the Zlatan. Do you think Robbie Keane could handle Zlatan? Oh, I would love to see Robbie Keane get his hooks into Zlatan. Those two. Because Robbie Keane is so passionate. He is, he gets so fired up. You know, one of the things that I love about Robbie Keane, why he's my favorite Galaxy player, uh, the Galaxy of the gal current Galaxy roster, right. is how how devoted he is to the team and how he invested he is in winning. And you never get the sense that Robbie is going to give an inch or that he's going to, you know, he's here just for, um, just to log minutes or impress the media or sell kits or anything like that. He always just is so invested in winning. Right. But then you have Zlatan and there's no team, not in PSG, not even when he played for Barcelona. I mean, he will not accept being a, a second fiddle to anyone. Which is why at PSG, you know, basically, even if you're Edison Cavani, you have to take a back seat to Zlatan. That's uh, see, there we go. All right, who's gonna take a back seat? Who's gonna who who? And I mean, if you're Nigel De Jong or Giovanni dos Santos, and you have the prospect of this looming, towering, larger than life figure, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, coming, that's uh, you're gonna have to figure out a way to be happy playing second fiddle because Zlatan will not have it any other way. <laughs> I like that. I think I think that would be interesting though. I mean, he is a little bit older. We've talked about that. I don't think there's any chance that he's done as far as soccer terms, and I, I think he could be really good for, for Major League Soccer as a whole. I won't even just say the LA Galaxy. If Zlatan wants to come to MLS, they need to figure out a way to happen, even if that means it's not with the LA Galaxy. I'll just be salty if it's not with the LA Galaxy. I'll just be, I'll be a little angry. They're kind of like those Philly people who still want their $50,000 for discovery. I'm sorry, but that's just such whiny, well, if, whiny if BS. if he goes to New York, it would be, wouldn't that be fun to play him if he went to New York? If he went to the Red Bulls or NYCFC, we could have like a, an annual, like, you know, we could... Maybe he would come and play in L.A. That would be, you know, have like a, a visitor's team game where, you know, you get to see Zlatan. I'd love to just see him play in person. I've never seen Zlatan pay, play in person. Yeah, me, me yeah. neither. No, I mean, but, you know, if he goes to the Eastern Conference, that's like the second division of U.S. soccer <laughs> over there. I mean, that's that's some really – I was looking at the standings and God – they're, You're asking for some trouble on Twitter. They're you are horrible. asking for it. They are horrible. And Philly's like, Philadelphia after the Philly game, Wendy, was jumping up and down like they won an MLS Cup with a 2-2 draw. I'm like, how do you? How are you that excited? Oh, we 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 killed the Giants today. No, nah, not really. I mean, they the L.A. played like crap, and you hung on. Congratulations. Uh, you know what do you what do you want? That was not, that was not Dan Kennedy's best game. Mm. No, I mean, I, in a way, I think. Well, first of all, I. I think it's nice. Uh, one thing that I do like about MLS is that its structure forces parity. And so I f like it when a team that had a bad year, like last year, Colorado and Philly, you know, had really bad years. And I right. like the fact that you can turn around and a team can all of a sudden start winning. And right. this year, Colorado and Philly are actually doing pretty well. And right. it's kind of, I, I really like that. I think that the reason why um, lo the LA Galaxy has carries such uh, has so much psychological currency with other teams is that um, because of the sustained success that we've had over a prolonged period of time, it gets into people's minds that even if we're not even having like a particularly good year and we're kind of at an off 
phase, which every team in MLS does, I think in the back of people's minds is still like, oh, it's still the LA Galaxy. I still have to beat them. Like, cause, cause I think the the five titles and Landon Donovan, Beckham, it all kind of overshadows right. uh, other teams. You know, they carry a little bit of their chip. Like, oh, if we can beat the LA Galaxy, then we're really doing well. Yep, yep. No, you're right. I mean, listen, I understand the LA Galaxy have a target on their back. That's fine. I'm okay with it. Whatever. But I mean, I like it. I carry I think it's a badge of honor. I, I proudly wear that I, when people like bash on and the LA Galaxy and it's so salty and you can just taste the salt of their tears. I'm like, ah, I, you know, I like it. When do you ruthless? I didn't I know I never realized. <laughs> I never really. I enjoy it. I mean, that's the good part. But but you're ruthless, and and that's good. I think that's what this this podcast no. needs a little a little ruthlessness. That's good. Um, all right, let's get into a little LA Galaxy news. Switching things a little bit around for this show. Obviously, no game to recap. We sort of just went over the last time the LA Galaxy actually played a game uh, was against Philadelphia last Wednesday. So if you uh, can remember back that far, and you've already heard our podcast where we actually already went over it with Jared, um, you can go back and listen to that one if you really want some more in depth uh, Vancouver or. or Philadelphia stuff. I did want to get to LA Galaxy 2 real well, and it's not even on the show notes. I just pulled it up and wanted to talk about it. Uh, mm-hmm. LA Galaxy 2 uh, went up to Vancouver and play- played Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2. Because mm-hmm. you have to have all of those. The little caps, yeah, yes. Yes, uh, little caps. See, that's better. They should have just named them <laughs> the little caps. All right, so anyway, they go up there. Um, they quickly fell behind 3 to nothing. the LA Galaxy 2 did. Uh, ended up getting real close and losing the game 4-3. to three. Uh, LA Galaxy 2 scored three goals um, in the second half. Let's see. Actually, you know what? They even scored a goal up in the first half. Jose Villarreal had a set-piece goal. I forgot about that one. So uh, Jose Villarreal had two goals, uh, and Denzel Slager had uh, a goal as well. Jose Villarreal got two goals and one assist on this. Uh, it was okay. Jack McBean, not there, took a knock in practice a little bit earlier in the week. Didn't travel with the team. I heard he is going to be back and ready to play for LA Galaxy 2, just in case you're worried about Mr. McBean. Um, but, you know, LA Galaxy 2 did, played so horrible, really, in the first half that even they couldn't save themselves in the second half. And uh, unfortunately, that happens. And in USL on the road, that's going to happen a lot. There's going to be a ton of goals, and there's going to be lots of sprinting. And, uh, you know, it's going to be generally frenetic, which is what USL soccer is. So that's all good uh, Good news as far as the LA Galaxy 2 still staying in contention in USL on the USL side. But that was really the only game that happened for the LA Galaxy, either senior team or USL team, uh, for the last week. So it's kind of And been- congratulations to Nashville, Tennessee, for being awarded the most uh, – the recent USL franchise. Yeah, aren't there like 70 USL franchises now? There's going to be a buttload of them. There are so many. When you look at that USL, you're like, this is, but it's good. We need, we need a stronger lower divisions. We really do. No, no, absolutely. So I, I like to have, I want to have big Eastern Conference, big Western Conference. Ultimately, I'd like it if USL split into multi divisions and conferences to minimize travel, but. That, I think that's I, coming. I, that that is. Yeah. They already split it as far as Western and Eastern. Western East, yeah. I know, but there should be a Central or a Mountain or something. I too. think I think they're getting to that. If they keep adding teams, they're going to have to. But USL really making a play to be that sort of second division because uh, NASL, although I love them and I think they're great and I think they could do have some success, uh, just is not setting themselves up to be that strong second division yet in my mind. And that's that's a little worrisome. But then you also have USL, so I don't know that you're overall overly worried. Except that USL is really propped up by MLS. Whenever you think about it. And so as long as MLS is doing good, then USL will do good. And so vice versa, everything in between, they're all interconnected, which means that if you pull one out, it's like Jenga. If you pull one out, um, you could have problems and they could all fall to the ground and then you'll swear and throw the bricks across the room. Yeah, I actually, NASL has some financial mismanagement issues. It could sort out. And if it, if it did, it would probably be a really good second division. But until I think it sorts out some of the management dysfunction that goes on within the league, it's, it's going to, I think USL is climbing, clawing its way up the ladder to be the second division. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting. We'll have to, uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on all that stuff. If you're a pro rel person, you want NASL to sort of pick up and be that second division. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to... for them to get better. Yeah. Help for them to get better, yeah. Or we could just split this, you know, Major League Soccer into two 20-team conferences and just have the Eastern Conference be the lower division. I have three theories on how to implement pro rel in the we, United we're States. Not, no, I, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. <laughs> I don't save care. It. I'm not a pro rel person. But every time, like, I, I, I actually have this worked out so where I could do it. Okay. If Don Garber, Don, Don if you're listening. Call her. If you're listening, Don, just pick up the phone, give me a call. I'll explain it to you. It'll be no problem. 
Not that I care because I really don't care about pro rally in those days. <laughs> it doesn't bother me either. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like so not high on my priority list. I want a cap. I want the higher cap, uh, a salary cap first. And we're going to yeah, talk I'd, about. I'd like more money. Yeah. I we're going to we're, we're gonna talk about MLS player uh, salaries here coming up in, mm-hmm. uh, I think, the mm-hmm. second segment. So that'll be fun because there's some I nice. I love little... salary dump day. I know. Salary dump day is one of my favorite days of the year. Yeah. We'll talk about some of the stuff Brian Dunsett said on Twitter as well about salary, salary dump day. I, that's what we're going to call it from now on. Salary dump day. That's good. All oh, right. it is salary. Uh, twice a year, it's twice like year? Christmas. It you is. get you get you get salary dump day. So we're gonna talk about that, but first let's talk about Giovanni dos Santos and declining the Copa America call for Mexico. Um, I want to attack this from an LA Galaxy perspective and understand what that means for LA, um, which you know basically should be missing Robbie Keane, who's going off to the Euros to captain Ireland, and then you're gonna have Jossie Zardes, who's gonna be off with the U.S. Men's National Team, playing in uh, Copa America, Copa Centenario here in the United States. Um, that tournaments, both of those tournaments, starting to ramp up a little bit. Jossie Zardes should be gone after the game on Sunday to head to U.S. Men's National Team camp, I believe. Um, and whenever that happens, they're already gonna start missing Jossie Zardes. Artists, and I think Robbie Keane's probably going to be gone not too long after that, so you can expect him to be gone. But Giovanni Dos Santos, who I think we all expected to be on that team, or at least it was close on the bubble, uh, did not get called into the team, um, or at least he did and declined the call up for whatever reason. And uh, coming up, I'm going to talk to Goal USA. Uh, John Arnold, who covers CONCACAF and covers Mexico um, a lot there, so we'll talk to him more in-depth coverage. But I want to know what you think about this sort of weird tale that's going on between Giovanni Dos Santos and, and Osorio, the, the coach of the Mexican national team, and whether or not you think this impacts the LA Galaxy positively or negatively. Well, it's you know, I always go deep with the conspiracy theories and this kind of stuff because MLS is so opaque. But... Um, so since Giovanni Dos Santos joined the LA Galaxy, he has not had a lot of time with uh, El Tri. He has not been getting called in. And I think, you know, part of that is a decision of the coach because when Miguel Herrera was the coach of um, the Mexican national team, he actually was reacted really positively to Giovanni Dos Santos coming to right. MLS. He was like, oh, it's a great, you know, great move. Right? I approve of it. And I don't think his current coach does approve of it. All right, Wendy, hold on. So, Hold on, we got a call. 323, who's this? Josh, it's Jose. Jose, what's happening, buddy? What can we do for you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Up on yourself. I I see you're drinking a Pacifico, at least uh, from the YouTube stream. Is that correct? This is true. I am drinking, and and it's wonderful. It's it's calming me down, quite honestly, Jose, because I'm a little fired up this week. (laughs) Yeah. I know you guys were talking about the Giovanni Dos Santos and uh, Osorio Rift and what it means for the Galaxy. Um, one thing off the bat uh, from the interviews that Gio gave at Walmart and Downey, yes, he seemed to be at peace with the decision. Uh, obviously, he didn't want to, you know, talk about it too much in depth because you know it happened at the exact same day that the event was going on. Right. But he he looks like he's at peace with the decision. He tweeted that he's going to support the the Mexican national team and that you know one day in the future that he'll be able to wear the kit. Um, somewhere, somewhere down the line. So I think he's just focused with playing with the Galaxy for now. I'm sure he's completely phased that out. I know the Mexican press and like the, the Spanish press here in L.A. are probably pressing him to kind of get an interview or kind of explain himself. But I think he's at a point where he's just focused with the Galaxy. Uh, he's kind of made it known. And um, I think that's where, where his head's at right now. Yeah. The way I look at it is it's very similar to what happened to Carlos Vela and, and uh, Chepo de la Flora, who was the previous manager of Mexico. I kind of look at it in that similar, uh, in, in that same way, because it's just a kind of an internal rift between a player and a coach, and sometimes it's the player and the federation itself. So right. uh, the way I see it, he's taking a sabbatical. I don't think he had any hard feelings with the decision that he made. Uh, I'm sure down the line we could probably get a better explanation, but... Uh, from a Galaxy standpoint, I, I think he's focused uh, on the task at hand. Uh, he's been in, in, in good in good form uh, lately, and so I'm pretty sure he's uh, focused on just maintaining that form. Um, one more thing is there might be an outside chance that maybe he gets called into the Olympic squad, right? Because that's something that Osorio, you know, doesn't have any uh, weight on as far as uh, uh, national team call-ups. That's a completely different coach, so. Um, it's an outside possibility. I'm not sure if uh, he's going to take that opportunity, but uh, again, I wouldn't worry too much if, uh, from a Galaxy standpoint, I think he's uh, 
and it's and he's focused, and I'm pretty sure he's uh, at peace with whatever decision he made. Awesome, <laughs> good stuff, Jose. All right, well, we're gonna let you go, but thanks for the call, man. And thanks for uh, stopping Wendy about the pro well rel stuff. I mean that that <laughs> needed to be you know stopped right there. <laughs> that needs to, we're gonna have we're gonna do a whole segment just on on Wendy and pro rel coming up just for you, Jose. All right, I'll talk to you <laughs> later, buddy. You. All right, see All you right. guys later. All right. So I, th- I think Jose makes a, a fair point, which is that a lot of times there's a relation, the influence of the Federation um, plays a role. And my perspective is that I think that the current coach's position is that uh, you shouldn't have gone to MLS. If you're going to come back from Spain, then you should have gone back to Liga Mejis. And as long as you're in MLS uh, and I'm the coach, then we will not be needing your services. And that he's, you know, essentially the tra- it was translated as you can say that you declined to call up, but basically um, you are a persona non grata as long as you are in MLS. Well, and I think that he's right that, that Giovanni DeSantis does seem at peace with it. And I think that... Um, that Giovanni DeSantis has been playing better and better for the Galaxy, and and I'm I'm really happy actually with how his 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 game has been coming along this season. So I think it's a loss for El Tri, and I feel bad for any fans of El Tri who really would have loved to have seen him play in the Copa America, but. Um, that's the decision of the Mexican national team. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Again, you know, we've talked so many times, Wendy, about it needing to be there. There needs to be something. He he needs to be happy. So if he really is happy with the decision, if he's a if he's a happy camper, because I'm not going to say that his. Let's see. How can I say this without being a little diplomatic about it? I'm not going to say that he's sensitive, but I think that it matters about what environment he's playing in, and I think it, ma- course, and, and, it matters. And and for him specifically, you know, I think maybe Landon was a little bit like that too, where yes. you know the environment matters and how you feel about how you play matters. And so as long as he's happy with it, then I see no issues for the LA Galaxy. And plus, you're going to have uh, Giovanni dos Santos there when you're missing Robbie Keane and, and Jossie Zardes, so he's going to be able to spearhead that attack. While those two guys are gone, and you know the, both these tournaments, obviously it varies how long uh, these guys are going to be gone. Um, lots of different things could happen, all sorts of, the, of things. But you could ha- miss guys for up to a month here. Um, and Grant- oh, of course, and it completely matters how you feel within the city and the team and the environment that you're playing, and that is such a huge influence on players, and it's so underappreciated by commentators. But the fact is that Giovanni Dos Santos had a really up and down career, and a lot of that was attributable to the fact that he was in a situation sometimes that he wasn't happy in. When he was at Spurs, he didn't really feel comfortable in England. It felt weird to him. He went to Spain, and he finally sort of got with it a little bit. You know, for the past two years. But I think my perception has been, and I could be wrong, but every time I see pictures of him or anything in Los Angeles, he is grinning. He's so <laughs> happy in Los Angeles. I don't know how he feels about MLS or the Galaxy or his his teammates. He seems happy with them. Right. But um, I do get the sense that he really enjoys living in a city like Los Angeles, which is, if you live in L.A., everyone here who lives in L.A. who's listening knows that, I mean, there's flat-out parts of L.A. that feel like Mexico, and there's a huge Mexican population, right. huge la- huge Mexican influence, the food, the culture, the music, the neighborhoods. And, I mean, you can be from Mexico and live in L.A. and feel very much like you're at home. Yeah. No, I mean, it, all of that comes part of it. So I agree. And he's always smiling because everybody's always talking to him about minions. No, Wendy, he loves his <laughs> some minions. That's Giovanni Dos Santos. Uh, all right, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. Whenever I come back, I'm going to be joined by Goal USA's John Arnold. So stick around for that. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, yeah, we got, obviously, we're previewing the game against San Jose. Uh, that gets coming up, and then we have a lot to talk about with regards to MLS player salaries. Oh, that's a good topic, right? I can't wait to dive in. There's mm, Wendy Analytics, w- analytics talk. Wendy, there is a player who is not on the LA Galaxy's roster, who I'm pretty sure the LA Galaxy are paying, and we're going to find out who that is. So don't go anywhere. Uh, you know you know who it is already? Did you read my article? Don't don't say it. This is a okay. tease. This is a tease. All right. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to uh, Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com, and we will be right back.
Recording from COG Studios and not their mom's basement, it's Corner of the Galaxy. Welcome back to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Josh Gessman, Wendy Thomas with you. Wendy's going to take a quick little break here as I get ready to talk with one of my favorite people, a good friend of mine, a good friend of the show's, uh, Goal USA's John Arnold. John, how's it going? It's going great. How's yeah. it going in Galaxy Land? You know, so in far. Corner so, of the Galaxy. In, in this particular corner of the galaxy, it's going just fine. I want to tell everybody, though, before we even start, that I got you just before you're going to a concert. And that you told me the yeah. name of this band, and I chuckled. And I said I wasn't going to bring it back up, but I just couldn't. I'm still <laughs> chuckling. So what band are you going to see today? It's, it, you're in Dallas, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Dallas. I'm going to the historic Granada Theater to see Snarky Puppy. That, that's Snarky It's, uh, it's snarky like a puppy. jam band, funk. Uh, they've been doing some. They're, they're like from Denton, um, which is where UNT is, and has a very good jazz school. So I guess they were all like, well, we're tired of this. Let's make funk music. And there you go, Snarky Puppy. Snarky Puppy, and not to be confused with Snarky Puppies. That's not more than one puppy. It's just, just a single <laughs> no. puppy. Many band members. It's one it's one snarky puppy. Many band members. Like, maybe too many, but it, it's, it's a good time. All right, very good. I'm glad we got that important uh, soccer talk out of the way there. All right, I wanted to bring you on because you cover CONCACAF for Goal USA. Uh, you're usually the guy I talk to whenever I have questions about anything in CONCACAF, including Mexico this time, John. Uh, Giovanni Dos Santos left off of the Copa Centario roster for the Mexican national team. Um, you know, it, it says that he has declined the, uh, the call up. I just want to know sort of what you're thinking and, and what your initial thoughts are on Giovanni Dos Santos being left off the roster. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Um, but it's something that I think you've come to expect watching the Mexican national team. I will say that with Juan Carlos Osorio, it sort of seemed like a new era. Like maybe this wasn't going to happen. You know, Carlos Vela is the, is the other guy who's this kind of once away was always feuding with the federation he was not in the team for years and years and he came back now he's back on the outs and giovanni as well there was there's two big admissions and then giovanni's brother so i think initially people thought well maybe giovanni said is jonathan on the team and osorio said no and then giovanni said no thank you um that's a possibility right it's also possible that osorio said hey uh i'm not going to start you I'm not going to use you as the first sub off the bench. Will you come? And Giovanni said, no, thank you. And Osorio said, okay. Um, but we're all guessing. We're all guessing at this point because the only thing we have to go by are, are the statements that Juan Carlos Osorio made in his news conference. Right. Um, the statement that the director of national team, Santiago Bolaños, made in the, in the news conference. And Giovanni's tweets and what he said in front of a head and shoulders advertising board at a walmart at a, which, um, which by the way is awesome let's just let's just stop for a second <laughs> the fact that i i knew I, I had seen that that had been scheduled for that night and i was like oh that might be poor planning if this all goes sideways and he was on <laughs> right and, and giovanni dos santos was on counterattack on sirius xmfc um the the you know a soccer show he's on there as it's being announced um and then he says he doesn't want to talk about it which, which yeah. is, yeah, I mean, I don't know how. It was Grant Wall, and I forget uh, who else the other host was. Uh, the guy who does the New York Red Bulls play-by-play. Um, uh, I'm going to lose it. I can't, I can't think you, of this You name. got me. Okay, so anyway, so they're no, on there. To what I'm sure is a great play-by-play he, man. He's very good. I like him a lot. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, so he goes through this, and they announce it there, and, and he says, I don't want to talk about it. It's like you're talking about Copa America, you know, Copa Centenario, this huge big deal that's going to take place in the United States. Giovanni Dos Santos is there. Right. And and he's going to be able to talk about it, except that he's not on the team and now he can't talk about it. And he has these tweets and he goes to Walmart and the Mexican media chases him down at Walmart and talks. And he, he doesn't really say that much. I mean, what, what did you get no. from what he said? I, I think it's clear that there's just like with the Carlos Vela saga, just like with with some of the other, you know, even the previous times that Gio's been admitted, admitted from the team, I think that it's clear that there's something else happening here, and it's clear that no one is willing or able to say what else is happening. I told you this a little earlier, Josh, but when you translate Giovanni's tweets, there's a little subtle difference between the word puedo. It, it can mean I'm not able to, which is no puedo. It can mean I'm not able to, or it can mean I can't. Right. So I, I don't know. It depends on, the, on what, what he meant in the tweet and what the context is, and I think you can lose some of that in English. But even in Spanish, it still leaves it open to interpretation. Right. And that's where I think we're at. I mean, I think it's a situation where uh, we just frankly don't know, and we don't like that, and hopefully you know, it'll come out in the book next year or whatever. You know, Hopefully <laughs> it'll come out at some point, or, or maybe Gio will be able to speak more freely about it, or a story will shed light on that soon. But it's one of those things where like, 
as much as we want to know and, and as, as much as we're programmed to get the information that we, that we want in this, in this era and even eras before this, uh, I, I just think right now we don't know exactly what's going on. We don't even know kind of what's going on. We, 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 we know what we've been told, and, and that hasn't cleared anything up. So that's, uh, that's always tough whenever that happens. We, talk about Giovanni Dos Santos and his play. Now, granted, I have got to see him play a lot, uh, being an LA Galaxy person and, and following him and watching him play a lot. But do you think that his level, and some people have questioned this, do you think that his level is, ha- has been raised to where he should have been on the Mexican national team? I think he would have been a very, very enticing substitute option. Okay. Like when you look at Juan Carlos Osorio, he's generally done a 4-3-3. You could play Giovanni up front as one of those wingers, but I think that, that some other guys, Jesus Tecatito Corona, Irving, Loz- Irving Lozano who's on the team, the Tigres wingers, Javier Aquino and Jurgen Dam, they're both listed as forwards. I don't know that he's displacing those, you know, some of those guys in the starting lineup. I do think that, you know, you like to have him as an option off the bench because, you know, obviously you've seen in L.A. and you've seen watching him in the past with the Mexican national team in Europe, the versatility that he has. If you need someone to play in the midfield role, he can do that. If you need someone to play as a forward, he can do that. Um, So I I think he would have been a nice option as kind of a utility player. Like I said, maybe that played part of – may play into part of this is that Osorio wanted him to take a role that he wasn't comfortable with or didn't want to or felt that he should have been doing something else. We we don't know. But, yeah, I I don't think he would have broken into the starting lineup. I don't think his form – I think he's in good form, but I don't think he's he's back to where he's a surefire starter with this team. It's a very deep team, and that's why I don't think that – in the grand scheme of things, I don't think his absence, his brother's absence, or the absence of Carlos Vela will stop Mexico from having success in this tournament. And I'm not sure that, you know, the admissions are going to come back to haunt one Carlos Osorio. Um, but I do think he would have been a nice piece as kind of an extra, a little bonus. Right, right. Uh, there's, uh, is it safe to say there's no love loss between Giovanni Dos Santos and, and Osorio? I guess. It's, you know, it, it it's seems that way. It's like, how have, they, how have they even had time to lose love? Um, I don't know. You know, Osorio takes over the, the Mexican national team um, after the the uh, uh, CONCACAF Cup or whatever it was called, the thing in L.A., the, the Mexico-U.S. game. Tuca Ferretti was the interim Mexico manager. Osorio takes over after that. Uh, he hasn't lost a game as a Mexico manager yet. He's won every single match. So, you know, it's one of those things where he's coming from a pretty strong position uh, just because he's had so many good results. This will be the first I guess big test each face. They have played, you know, qualifiers, but their group is relatively easy, and especially as deep as this team is. So, I yes, it certainly seems like there's some sort of um, dissonance between Juan Carlos Osorio and Giovanni Dos Santos. It's, it's interesting because I think when Osorio got the job, having the perspective of that you know, as, as an American who covers Mexican soccer, you know, I always kind of look at how is this going to affect, you know, MLS and the general kind of American fans that I usually write to. Right. Um, my, my audience. And I thought, well, okay, here comes Osorio. This is going to be great news for Giovanni Los Santos. It's going to be great news if Carlos Bello decides to come to MLS. It's going to be great news if Cuba Torres ever gets minutes and starts scoring, which doesn't look like it's going to happen, but that's another topic. Because Osorio used to be with the Red Bulls. You know, he, he, he has a U.S. education. He has experience in the soccer setup here in the United States and, you know, is very open-minded and likes to try new things and is very kind of disciplined and, and does a lot of research. And so I really thought, oh, here's the opportunity for the MLS guys that maybe they weren't getting under Miguel Ferreira. Maybe they weren't getting under Chapo de la Torre. Uh, that, that hasn't worked out, but it hasn't been the case. You know, uh, Giovanni has yet to appear, uh, yet to get a call, and obviously the other guys aren't really informed. So I'm not saying that Osorio is biased against MLS, but it certainly seems that something is not clicking there between him and Giovanni Los Santos. Well, there you go. See, now, now we know exactly as much as we started, though, but we at least sound smarter. I think is really what it all comes down to, John. What do you think? I think you just wanted to get me on the line, and I'm okay with that. I like to hear your voice too. It's it's nice. I don't want to hold you from Snarky Puppy any longer, though. So, John Arnold, uh, you can follow <laughs> him on Twitter at uh, let's see, Arnold comma John. Spell out the comma. Don't put it in there, otherwise it doesn't work because that's not a valid Twitter address anyway. So, Arnold comma John. Follow him. He writes for Goal USA. John, have fun at the concert. All right. Thanks so much, man. Take care. All right. See ya. All right. That's John Arnold. Good friend. Go follow him on Twitter. Do all that fun stuff. I'm going to take a break whenever I get back. Wendy's back with me. We got calls. We got more from the live studio audience in here as well. You're listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com.
Ready for some more Corner of the Galaxy? Don't forget to head over to the website for all the latest podcasts, news, and more. Visit us online at cornerofthegalaxy.com. Hey, this is Chris. This is Eddie. This is Jason. And we're from Back Pocket Memory, and you're listening to Corner of the Galaxy. Welcome back to Corner of the Galaxy, cornerofthegalaxy.com. About 20 minutes left now. How much time flies when you're having fun? I want to thank John Arnold for coming on the show. John, you're awesome. Enjoy your uh, Snarky Puppies concert. I just, I can't, I can't handle it with, with the Snarky Puppies thing, Wendy. I, I seriously, I'm, every time I say Snarky Puppies, like, something goes off in my brain that makes me giggle uncontrollable, quite honestly. <laughs> so, it'll be uh, interesting. But we got a lot to talk about still. Passing off to the Giovanni Dos Santos thing. He's happy. We'll see how it goes. We'll let him We'll let him be, I guess. That's how it's supposed to be. And, uh, you know, then we'll wait for the tell-all book to come out where uh, it says that Osorio really told him that he wasn't on the team and, you know, that everything's crazy. So, <sighs> MLS player salaries. MLS players. Mm, All right. Salary number. What do you got? What do you got, Wendy? What? <clears throat> what? Well, where do you want to start with this wonder? Do you want so, to start? Do you want to start with the LA Galaxy spending technically less money than they did last year? Yeah, and we spend less than Toronto, and we spend less than New York City. We don't. We're not the highest. And did you see that Colorado jumped up from being one of the lowest spending teams to one of the highest spending teams because of Tim, Tim Howard joining the team? Yeah, I was gonna say it's one player, and you're like, oh, okay. It's one player, and it's Tim Howard. Yeah. Um, so I think it's very interesting. Obviously, um, salary dump day is an opportunity for us to all con- consider who is overpaid and who is underpaid in MLS and by how much. And I always like to caution people that you have to take into consideration when a team is deciding what to pay someone that they're not just considering on the field influence. Because obviously, Steven Gerrard is not 20 times more influential on a game than AJ De La Garza. Right. But when I go to the Step Hub Center uh, for an, a Galaxy game, I see so many Gerard jerseys everywhere. Everywhere I see Liverpool, but I also see tons of Gerard uh, Galaxy jerseys. And what I will tell you is that Liverpool is a very big club, right. and their fans are everywhere because you would, I mean, I see more Gerard jerseys than I see Dos Santos jerseys, and we're in L.A. Right. So I, 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 they must have sold six million dollars worth of those Gerard jerseys because <laughs> I think that people have to, you know, take take it with a grain of salt. That one of the reasons why he's here is because he's like an, a statesman of the game, and he is, you know, bringing a marketing aspect to the team, and you know, he's also a nice midfielder. Well, he, uh, it, it wouldn't take too many jerseys for it to equal six million dollars. They're about a million dollars a piece whenever you buy one. <laughs> oh, I have to tell outside. you a story when we yes. get off the phone about how, the lengths that I'm going to to try and get a legit jersey. Oh, really? Can't you yes. just can't you just go buy okay, one? Okay, so really quickly. Yes, go so ahead. Really quickly. I've been trying to I uh, I've been trying to get a legit jersey, okay? So they don't sell them online in women's and you can't get the I want the legit in navy. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. in, a, in a medium, just really simple with legit, okay? Don't sell it online. I had to go. I went to the LA Galaxy store. No. Called my uh, service rep at the LA Galaxy. She right. was like, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know how. She calls me back later. She's like, okay, I figured it out. You can go to the team store, ask them for, and they sell the plain ones, and you can get the name printed on it and pick it up after the game. So the only way that I can actually buy a legit jersey in Navy, women's, medium, is to actually physically go and get it like hand done for me they don't yeah. sell them they're not available you have to get them hand done well i mean that's the, that's kind of normal that's not that much of an extra i thought you were going to tell me like you were selling your kidneys well or something no like no that. i mean i was i went to like all these websites it's like i can't get a real legit jersey okay i mean because they sell them in, for men by the way online you can buy it online sexist it's, um, yes it's sexist. for a, a males and a, they do not have the woman's navy they have the male navy I'll tell not you. Not the women's. Not the women's. That's the right. trials and tribulations you go through. Of being Wendy. a female soccer uh, fan. That's I know, right. I know. It's it's tough. I don't know how you do it all the time, quite honestly. <laughs> all right. Let's get back to salary salaries. Dump, salary dump. Okay, okay salary dumps. So. So here's here's the interesting stuff. And here's the stuff that I wrote about. You can go on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can see some of my analysis on on just real some quick takes that I looked at the said, Oh, this is interesting. Uh, one of the biggest in, most interesting things that you're gonna find is that it shows that Giovanni Dos Santos's base salary in 2016 is two point five million dollars, whereas in twenty fifteen it was four million dollars which is actually a difference of 1.5 million dollars and everybody goes oh including me whenever i tweeted that out and then somebody corrected me uh professor stephen bank by the 
way, who's uh, who's awesome on Twitter and uh, corrects me. Professor and, Bay. Yeah, he's he, so we. I chat with him on Twitter all the time. I'm sure he. To you two lawyers, you're you're great. Um. Mm, anyway, we'd love to do it. Yeah. So he so he corrected me and said that the base salary here is probably just a correction because the base salary shown in 2015 is four million dollars, but that was only for half the season. So you prorate it down to two million dollars is what he really got. So as a matter of fact, his his base salary probably went up by five hundred thousand dollars instead of down by one point five million dollars. Thank you. And that's why he's our friend on Twitter. There you go. He so, tells us things like that. So that's that's crazy and stupid. It does look like, in fact, though, Robbie Keane did take a million dollar pay cut, which which is yeah. nice. Oh, I'm just going to let me cut a million dollars. Four point five was his 2015 base salary. Three point five million dollars for 2016 base salary. Uh, his guaranteed compensation is the same as his base salary. Don't worry about those terms. Quite honestly, they don't mean anything when we're talking about, you know, fake money anyway for most of the stuff. Um, let's see what catches your eye because I'll tell you what catches my eye is the fact that our backup keeper earns ninety thousand dollars, but where our ostensible first choice keeper earns two fifty, and yet our backup keeper performs seems to be performing much better you, than our ostensible first choice keeper. I, I don't know why everybody's surprised by this. We all knew that Dan Kennedy was getting paid more money than Brian Rowe, right? We knew that was happening, and. We know Brian, Brian Rowe even got a raise. All right, he got a raise. He got twenty thousand dollar raise, sixty thousand in twenty fifteen, eighty thousand in twenty sixteen. So he got a twenty thousand dollar raise. But Dan Kennedy, coming over from FC Dallas, remember this is a guy Bruce wanted. One hundred eighty thousand dollars getting paid right now. Uh, oh, no. You know, technically, you want you want to talk about some real fun. Dan Kennedy is making more money than Donovan Ricketts did from the LA Galaxy. But Donovan Ricketts' base salary was two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. But the LA Galaxy weren't paying most of that. So Dan Kennedy actually. He's probably making more money than Donovan Ricketts was for the LA Galaxy if you want to play that game. So that's well, the that's the one that sticks out. Right there. You know, that's the one. I think it's interesting when you look at this, um, you know, the the things that you can see Bruce Arena in this salary. You can see the salary structure. You can see overspending on age and veteran players and locker room guys because you can see Jeff Lorenkowitz is earning $175,000 a year. Mike McGee is earning $250,000 a year. These are all, you know, veteran, veteran MLS yeah, guys. I, 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 don't, I don't see that as, I don't see either of those as overspending. Quite honestly, you look at, you look at what they were making in 2016 and what he was able to bring them in for. It actually makes some good sense. He, Jeff Lorenkowitz was making $265,000 with the Chicago Fire last year. But right. how many minutes is he going to see this year? He's going to be he's probably going to be playing a lot more than you think he's going to be playing cuz he's the sub. He's the guy who's going to be playing in the middle. He's the guy who's going to have to come in and take Gerard's minutes or or Nigel De Jong's minutes whenever that happens. I do think that's a place where they're going to sub. They're going to sub the outside wings, the middle of, uh, of of the midfield especially whenever they want to kill a game off and bring some defense in. They're going to pull Gerard out whenever they're going to bring some defense in eventually. That's going to have to happen. So on I, the I, other end, on the other yes. end, if we're looking at value process oh, yeah. bucks, I'm telling you, Sebastian Leggett at $110,000 a year is a steal. You're, you're so st- biased. It's you're <laughs> no, so I'm biased. Not. It's, it's, I'm not. I am not biased. He is. He contributes a lot when he's on the field. He does. He, does. he plays both sides of the ball. He's super aggressive. He's creative. He can. You could put him in different positions. He's technical. He's got a lot of skill. He brings a lot to the team. And if you if you don't believe me there, how about Ariel Lassiter? Yep. 50, the lowest played uh, player on the LA Galaxy roster, a mere $50,000 a year. Well, what are you going to pay him? He came up from USL too. I mean, listen, you, uh, like I look at some of these and, and none of, listen, normally there's one guy on the team you're going, oh my God, he's getting overpaid. Like so bad, like uh, Edson Buttle last year or even Dan Todd, Kennedy. Todd Dunavant. Dan Kennedy's, yeah, Dan Dan Kennedy's getting that's overpaid. It. That's it. Everybody, Steven Gerrard's getting paid, overpaid $6 million. Here's, here's the thing about designated players. Don't pay attention to any of the dollars. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. That's it's p- it's fictional money. It's not you don't have to worry about it. It's what? just it's just and also for LA Galaxy DPs, we're always going to be paying a lot. It's okay. Uncle Phil doesn't mind. He's got the money. He's got, you know, he, he owns the Staples Center. He can afford it. Don't worry, folks. The only thing you should be worried about with designated players whenever you look at this is whether or not you want somebody else in that designated player spot because they cost the same against the cap. So it doesn't matter how much money they make. Yes, yeah, so the question isn't, isn't, I mean, I don't care. Pay Steven Gerrard 10 million, 20 million, I don't care. I want to know whether he's playing well. Yeah, and, and if he th- plays well, pay him an infinite amount of money. I don't care. I just want him playing well. And and that's the thing. Listen, I I don't think he's earned his $6 million, regardless of the off 
off-the-field stuff that he brings in, and that's the God's honest truth. But he has been playing better. He has been doing looking a little bit better. He has been more involved in the attack. He has been a better player this year for the LA Galaxy than he was last year, and he has a chance of almost earning that $6 million if he can bring an MLS Cup to the LA Galaxy at the end of the year, if he stays till the end of the year. If all of that happens, then I don't see six million dollars. You know, six million dollars would be a, a throwaway compared to to what um, you know you could be spending on possibly a Zlatan Ibrahimovic who's coming in for ten or twelve million dollars. Again, the money doesn't matter with designated players, and I've tried to say this the best way I can. I think I have to hit some of you over the head with it. It doesn't matter. The six million dollars that doesn't count against my cap. It doesn't hurt the team. All that hurts the team is whether or not that player is taking up a designated player spot like Omar Gonzalez was. Omar Gonzalez was overpaid because he wasn't good enough to be a designated player and he was taking up a spot. All right? So that's uh, that's my take on it. All right, let's see. I think we have a call coming in. I, I think I know who it is, too. Corey. Are we allowed to cross the streams <laughs> like Ghostbusters yeah, or what's going to happen it's the Hey, public, Corey. <laughs> the world is going to blow up is what's going to happen. I just wanted to call in before Wendy got that restraining order taken out for her on Sebastian. Yeah, I was. That's that's probably a good idea. (laughs) That's probably a good idea. What what do you what are you thinking, Corey? Are did you pay attention to any of the MLS player salary stuff? Is there is it just Dan Kennedy that's sort of the you're making too much money guy? Yeah, I mean the DP stuff that's come down a little bit, so it takes off a little bit of the overall dollar number. But you know, there's nothing out there that really surprised me too much, and there's so many different mechanisms out there with. Tam and Gam and Ham and all these other <laughs> things out there with allocation monies of, of all sorts of stripes and colors that I don't even know how it's how it how it comes and goes anymore. Yeah, no, it is uh it's 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 interesting. The LA Galaxy, I guess the the for both of you, the LA Galaxy do have one, two, three players who are also over the maxed capped salary budget number, um, including Yellow Van Dam, Jesse's artist, and Nigel Young, all make over the max budget, which means that TAM or G- or GAM is being used, targeted allocation money or general Are we allocation thinking money. that Colorado just gave them a whole boatload of it? I, d- I don't think that they're really using all that much whenever you look at the differences between that. I mean, technically, Yellow Van Dam's, uh, Yellow Van Dam's uh, base Fourth salary... Like is under the max, but his guaranteed compensation is over. So I imagine that they're probably paying, you know, ten or twelve thousand dollars of TAM to, in order to pay it down under the cap. Whenever you look at it, so um, yeah, I mean, it's the LA Galaxy doing the good thing. Uh, Ashley Cole's in at three hundred thousand dollars. Let's just remember that that happened. All right, um, still That's one of the happened. Thank you, Tam. Yeah, Thank I was you, still one of the most, by the way, uh, probably highest paid defenders in Major League Soccer outside of you know designated player Liam Ridgewell, probably for uh, for uh, Portland. There's probably a few, but I say I was disagreeing with Sean about this today. I say that Cole and Rogers are worth their salaries, even though they're for fullbacks. They're they're paid handsomely. They're not too bad. Corey, did you just miss me? Is that why you called in? You know, I was I got a little I got a little you know jealous after it's been <laughs> almost a month now. I know. So I know. Wasn't gonna let let Wendy have all the fun. We're I, I, we're very possessive of you, Josh. I, you know, I, I when understand. you're with someone else, we're thinking about oh he's with Corey. Yes. You know, he's with well, Gary. I've been lightly I've been lightly following the 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 Geo News, and I got to listen to your conversation with John and everything. And right. You know, I guess my takes on it a little different. There, there's definitely there's definitely some things out there that we are not. Uh, you know, we're not the the curtain hasn't been p- pulled back for us to uh, be privy to that type of information. I do think that the coach himself is in a little bit of a CYA, you know, mode right now, right. just because Mexico cycles through head coaches like I do with you know trash bags or something, right? And so the way that he chose to phrase it was obviously something of the you know, Gio and Vela chose to, you know, they denied their call in, Yeah. you know, he kind of pushes it back on the player that said, you know, I went to them and I kind of approached them in a way that I thought that I could get them on board. And who knows how many caveats were put on top of that. But the way that he chose to phrase it, at least as it was translated from the, from the press conference was that they turned down a call to the team. So he can kind of wash his hands and absolve himself of it if they don't go in and perform the way that they did. I think I think that that's probably we're going to end up and we're going to figure out what all this stuff is, and that's probably going to be what it is, Corey. So I think that's good. All right, buddy, I'm going to let you go. Yeah, absolutely, but that's good news for the Galaxy fans for sure. I think so. I'll probably catch you catch up with you next week, all right? Sounds good. All right, see you, Corey. Good show, guys. All right, Corey Ritzow, co-host on Corner of the Galaxy, calling in. Always like it whenever we can get everybody involved. The other involved. woman. Yeah. I like to think of him. <laughs> the other woman. Poor <laughs> Wendy. It's okay, Wendy. 
<laughs> it's okay. Um, here is let's let's point to the one thing that really stood out with me, and it took me a while to actually track it down. If you read it, read my story early in the morning, you should probably go back and read it again because there's an update there, and it's sort of the mysterious case of Dan Gargan. Dan Gargan is listed at the very bottom of the player salaries list, and he's listed at a hundred and forty-five thousand dollars with no team affiliated to him, Wendy. And I almost guarantee you. Almost 100% the LA Galaxy are paying that $145,000, but it's probably not hitting the cap. That's yeah, my guess. I think that that's probably right. And that's why Dan Gargan, we were seeing on, on television, because remember how he was dropped less than a week, I think, before we actually remember he was dropped at the very, very, very right. end right. of the preseason. It was like very, it was only days away from playing that he was dropped. And so that probably has something to do with it. Very well could. And, uh, you know, we'll have to, uh, we'll keep an eye on to see if anything ever pops up. But now you know that Dan Kennedy is getting two paychecks, one from Time Warner Cable Sports and, and one probably from the LA Galaxy or Major League Soccer as he's a defender without a team and is being paid $145,000, both on base and guaranteed money. All right. Are you going to tell us now why you're fired up? S this Steven Gerrard quote thing is driving me crazy, Wendy, for two days. I think I've probably lost. Can you just give me, can you express, express, breathe, Josh, breathe. Okay, now tell us. The tell, tell the podcasting audience your story. The, the tweet comes out. The tweet. I'm going to call it the tweet because everybody knows what the tweet is. Steven Gerrard chatting to BT Sport before Liverpool play Sevilla in the uh, Europa Cup final, right? Um, mm -hmm. Everybody knows this. Every, it's a big game, and you knew Steven Gerrard would have some part in it. Now, he didn't fly over there to take part in the studio. He did it from his house. He, he, he got on the phone. He got on, like, a video chat with BT Sport, and he said, this is, well, said, not only do I wish I was playing for Liverpool, I wish I was playing for Klopp. Right? That was that was all we got. And this sends everybody into a tizzy. All right? And I'm sitting there going, well, that's the pretty obvious thing for him to say, quite honestly. I'm trying to think to myself, hmm, if they ask me, Josh, would you rather be playing for Liverpool today and playing for Klopp? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I would. As a matter <laughs> of fact, I think most players in Major League Soccer, if asked the question, would want to be playing for Liverpool and wanting to be playing for Klopp. Because... That's a, a cup final. Who doesn't want to play that? And Klopp seems like he's a fun guy to play for, too. I mean, I, me having no real athletic ability, at least not in terms of professional ability, I want to play for Jurgen Klopp right now. In fact, if he came in here and started you know, coaching me through this podcast, I would be ecstatic about it, all right? And I think everybody would. So, that, so that's the thing. But that's, that goes beyond it because everybody's upset. They're saying, you know, if Steven Gerrard doesn't want to be here, if he doesn't want to play for the LA Galaxy, then he should go home. That's, that's the overwhelming feel from LA Galaxy fans. And I sit there and I go... How could you not expect him to say this? He said stuff like this before. And maybe this is it. Maybe that this is the straw that breaks the camel's back on this one. Ma um, I think there's a couple of dynamics that we should well, be aware hold of. Hold on, hold on. I'm still, I'm still get to yell for okay, a little okay. bit longer. Okay. So then, so I, I see everybody doing this. And I'm like, guys, I don't understand how you're this upset about it. The guy is playing well for the LA Galaxy. He is engaged with the LA Galaxy right now. He is focused on the games. When he plays, he's there to play, and he's he's making a difference on the team. Now, granted, that wasn't the case last year, but that's not last year. That's this year. And then, you know, they added the $6 million that he's making, which, by the way, everybody knew how much money he was making, Wendy. That wasn't a surprise. It was just like, oh, well, all of a sudden I see it in print, and now I'm going to be more outraged. All that stuff. Listen, Steven Gerrard, if he wants to be here, should stay here. But he's still going to talk about Liverpool because Liverpool is his first wife who died. Okay, he didn't break up with her. It wasn't a mutual feeling. He couldn't play there anymore because he wasn't going to get playing time. And he thought to himself, hey, this is my chance to go somewhere else. And so she's still around. And so if you get married to Steven Gerrard again, he still loves his first wife because he didn't want to leave that situation in the first place. All right. But he had to because he's old and basically MLS is all he has left anymore. So how are you upset about this? It makes no sense to me. Calm down, everybody, I'm, as I say as I scream. But calm down <laughs> and understand that Steven Gerrard right now is playing well for the LA Galaxy. If he does, you know how he can make it up to me? He can lift an MLS Cup at the end of the year, and I will be happy with that. And so will everybody else, by the way. So this, it's just, it's, I understand the comment can be taken harshly. That if you're an LA Galaxy fan, you can be upset about that. All right? But at the same time, telling, shipping him off? All right? Everybody thinks Zlatan's coming in, too, by the way. I'm like, you know, that's not 100%. That's, that's not just even, a rumor. That's a rumor. a rumor. So, yeah. so don't be shipping off Steven Gerrard right now at a position of need, by the way, for yeah. the LA Galaxy in that attacking central midfielder role. Yeah. I, I don't... I Go there's ahead. A, there's a... Are you done? Yes, I need to breathe anyway. I know. Take a, take a little sip of your, your Pacifica. Okay, I will. Um, 
there's a few dynamics at issue here. One is the, the money thing I don't get at all. I'm a miserable capitalist. I really just believe that your value is whatever the market will bear and that's tested out by whatever someone will pay you. Bingo. Um, yeah. yeah. So though with respect to Liverpool, I do think that a lot of times people don't appreciate necessarily when someone is giving interview who they're giving it to and the perp and the audience that they're giving it for and the fact that he is directly speaking to Liverpool fans when he's giving an interview like that. And so Steven Gerrard, as an intelligent man, is attuned to the fact that, you know, he has to be aware of who he's speaking to. And I'm also a terrible person to talk about um, Jurgen Klopp because uh, I have to completely confess that I'm a huge Borussia Dortmund fan. And right. one of the reasons I became a Dortmund fan is because I love Jurgen Klopp so much. So I'm absolutely the wrong person to um, you know, be speaking about whether Klopp should be idealized or worshipped by players. Um, and, but the last thing is that MLS fans uh, can be – sensitive, very sensitive to um, the perception, fair or unfair, that we're a illegitimate league or that we haven't, you know, earned our stripes or that there isn't quality to be found here. And so I think that when, you know, someone who is as well regarded as Steven Gerrard says something which could be perceived in a light which is, you know, possibly or potentially critical of his current team, that, you know, we're just sensitive to it. I do believe that it's not like Steven Gerrard is saying, you know, uh, you know, my current team sucks and I hate it here or anything like that. I don't think that's true. And my sense is when he plays, he really is committed to playing and he cares a lot about winning. I think his sense of uh, professionalism bars him from ever, you know, playing any less than the full effort. But I mean, I understand their perspective, which is that they don't want any slight. They, you know, you don't want any slight to pass right. when you feel like it could be, especially since, you know, it's our team. This is our team. You know, the LA Galaxy, there's a lot of Liverpool fans in the world and they're entitled to be Liverpool fans, but the LA Galaxy is our team. And so we want to protect our team. So I, I appreciate the sense of the, the where that comes from. It comes from a space of wanting to be protective and respectful of your team and wanting others to do the same. But I don't think that Steven Gerrard meant anything by it, and I don't think it means anything with respect to the attention that he's bringing to being an LA Galaxy player. Now, you want, if you want to get angry, let me read you some quotes from the rest of that interview, because I think you could get angry at some of the stuff that he has said, but not for the one that I read, because that's the kind of place that Josh lives in most of the time. Here's Steven Gerrard, what he said to BT Sport before the Liverpool-Sevilla game. I would love to be on the pitch playing in the final. In better circumstances, I would love to be sitting alongside the boys, but I'm, I'll still be watching, and hopefully they can get a good victory. I think they'll have the firepower to get over the line. He goes, I'm sitting here now about to watch this game, and not only do I wish I was playing for Liverpool, but I wish I was playing for Jurgen Klopp. He also added that he's not just lifted the players, Jurgen Klopp, he's lifted the supporters, he's lifted the city, and everyone enjoys watching him. He's very infectious. He makes you smile when you watch his interviews and see his behavior on the sideline. He's a manager you would love to play for. Steven Gerrard before there. In better circumstances, that's the only part I have a problem with. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but, and that could be, you know, you could interpret that as a signal that in better circumstances, if I hadn't been booted from Liverpool, if I hadn't right. been shunted and I hadn't, you know, had to go to this, you know, bedraggled part of the world, Los Angeles. <laughs> I don't think that's really what he means. I think that that's more of a reflection of how he ended his time. And also, you know, what happened with Liverpool vis-a-vis -vis Brendan Rodgers, the right. fact that they had this coach who... For a couple of years, you know, they brought them so close in 2013 and then they had a miserable season and, you know, and then Klopp comes in and really revitalizes the team. He does get spirits up. I think that you could just as easily say that this is a comment which you could construe as being, you know, a, something, a signal to the leadership of Fenway Sports Group vis-a-vis uh, Brendan Rodgers versus Jurgen Klopp and not so much LA Galaxy versus Liverpool. But I understand what you're saying in better circumstances as though be, pl playing for LA the LA Gal Galaxy yeah. and MLS is like a terrible circumstance to so, be in. So now, so now people understand why apparently I've just been uh, just flying off the hook for the last two days on people on Twitter. I think I've only lost two or three Twitter followers, so, you know, we're, we'll still survive. That's how it goes. I, you know, I, I'd also like to just point out to people that Twitter is not real life, and you should probably not be a dick to people on Twitter. 
That's just my little PSA for today. All right, LA Galaxy versus San Jose Earthquakes. We got about oh five minutes left here, Wendy, because you and I have found lots of stuff Sorry, to talk we about. We talk. We're such gossips. I know that's how it works. Uh, the LA Galaxy San Jose Earthquakes Sunday, May twenty second, twenty sixteen, four p.m. kickoff time. So a little bit earlier than normal. This game will be kicked off on Fox Sports One if you want to watch it on television. But quite honestly, there's no excuse. It's a Cali Clasico. Get your butt to the stadium. Uh, let's see. Duh, duh, duh. San Jose played a midweek friendly against Real Sociedad of La Liga. They won two to one on Wednesday. Wednesday night. The last time that San Jose actually played was a week before that, a Wednesday midweek game. So they had no game over the weekend uh, where they won three to one versus Houston at home. And I think it lost a two game or it, it stopped a two game losing streak for them. Uh, Chris Wondolowski played all 90 minutes in the Real Sociedad game. Uh, got two goals. Wando Brace basically gave them the win there. Um, but I, I find it interesting that in a short week where he's going to have to travel down to Los Angeles, that Chris plays 90 minutes. Um, and now we'll have to face off against the LA Galaxy. Uh, maybe with some tired legs here. Maybe they're already writing it off. The LA Galaxy, Wendy, 19, 5, and 5 at home versus the San Jose Earthquakes all time. And people want to call it a rivalry because it is, because whenever it goes back the other way, the LA Galaxy tend to lose up in San Jose. What's up with that? That's BS. Well, we know that away games are tough, right? Tougher in MLS than any other league that I can think of, with the exception of maybe China or Russia. Okay. Um, but I think that. Uh, with respect to the chances, I, I, you know, the San Jose Earthquakes not exactly tearing it up this year, not exactly, you know, lighting it up. Away, their away record is pretty poor. They do not have an away win yet this season, but that's okay. But- LA Galaxy, you know, we're no nothing. We're, you know, we're certainly not ones to throw rocks at the away game house. Oh, because... three and two. Oh, three and two for San Jose on the road. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think that I predict that it will be an LA Galaxy victory. Right. That we'll, we'll prevail um, then in this Cali Classico. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm not one to start sniffing at, at San Jose Earthquake since I know our own away record is pretty miserable. Alan Gordon has been training, says he's ready for the San Jose Earthquakes game. Nigel Young says that he's back to full training ahead of the San Jose Earthquakes game as well, so expect both of those guys to be there. Everybody else, by the way. I goal, though. I do want McGee and goal for this game. No, no. It's going to be Brian Rowe, which will be just perfect. I th- I, I'm calling it now. Brian Rowe back in as the number one starter. I said it last week after the Philadelphia game that Brian Rowe would be back. That's going to happen. As far as you know I'm concerned, that's going to get happen. at least 10 minutes, right? He has to because he's going to want to beat somebody up. So Alan Gordon yeah, will be in there. Yeah, fist fight. That's right. Uh, you know, everybody else. By the way, injury-wise, LA Galaxy, knock on wood, find some wood, everybody. Knock on wood, the LA Galaxy are actually pretty healthy. Alan Gordon, if he comes back, will be off the injury list. Nigel DeYoung, off the injury list. There's only one player that I know of that's currently on the injury list, and that's Bradford Jamison IV. Um <laughs> So we'll we'll wait. Don't worry. Don't worry. I, I have I have good faith that Bradford will be back as soon as he can. So, uh, but anyway, he's the only person I know of that's currently on the injury list, as far as I know. So, um, that's what you have for the LA Galaxy. I I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with DeYoung and what formation they play, Wendy, because the four three three doesn't really suit Steven Gerrard and Nigel DeYoung being in there together. But that's probably going to happen. So, do they play a four three three or do they go something different? Is Jossie Zardes going to play on the wing again? Um, you know, when he's been doing so well vertically up top and, well, and sort of leading I hope that. they don't put Jossie there as in the wing. Well, I mean, it, it's I find it hard to put Steven Gerrard and Nigel de Jong in the center of the midfield and like without moving one of them left or right. So so one of those one of them's not gonna be in the center if they go four three three. And how does that work? And who's the other person? Is it Legette? Is it Boateng? It's Legette is the answer, but that's fine. Um, so sure. Le- Legette's in there. So, but then your width is coming from the wings. You know, does Robbie Rogers start? Does AJ De La Garza start? Oh my God, there's so many things. See, I told you the problem was going to be one of people got healthy and not that people were injured. Healthy is the big issue right now and who's going to play. That's probably a good thing for the LA Galaxy and Bruce Arena. But nonetheless, uh, I also think the LA Galaxy are going to win this game just in case you were wondering. Um, Wendy, give me a score so that way you can be wrong and then I'll give a I score. Think- I am gonna. I'm gonna guess it's gonna. It's gonna be a sound LA Galaxy victory. I'm guessing three nothing. Three nothing. Ooh, a shutout too. Something the LA Galaxy have trouble doing. Brian Rowe and goal. Two to Shut one out. LA Galaxy. That's what I give you. Um, Jossie Zardis on the score sheet because he's been playing so well. And I'll give one to Sebastian Lejet just to make you happy. All right, there you go. Ah. Uh. Okay. All right. I know. Calm down. Here we go. Uh, again, the LA Galaxy face off against the San Jose Earthquakes on Sunday, May 22nd, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Get your tickets at lagalaxy.com forward slash tickets. Wendy, is there possibly anything else we have to talk about? No. I mean, we could, but we're not going to. Well, right? you and I can gossip for hours, but we don't need a podcast audience for that. No, we don't. All right. Well, tell people where they can find you. 
You can find me at cornofthegalaxy.com on American Soccer Now. All right, there you go. And follow her at Bards Blonde on Twitter. I'm at Jay Guessman on Twitter or at Corner of the Galaxy. It's at Galaxy Podcast is our Twitter handle for this show. Go to YouTube.com, Corner of the Galaxy, where you can subscribe for all of our live shows. That's always fun. You should do that. Uh, I want to thank everybody for calling in. I want to thank uh, Greg and Seb for sitting in in the studio audience as well. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And they're going to leave with a magnet uh, because I have to get rid of them somehow. And they offered to take some. So they're going to leave with a magnet, and we appreciate them stopping by. iTunes, Corner of the Galaxy, all those fun places. Just type in Corner of the Galaxy. That's how you can find the show. Otherwise, we'll see you out at the stadium on Sunday. I will be there. Come say hi to me. I might have magnets for sale. You never know. $2.25 that's you one. All right, everybody. Have a good one. We'll catch you next time. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at the Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Arajo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everyone.